Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I might does this. So I finally managed to finish my Technomancer DPS build. In this video, I'll be going over two builds for you. An epic full DPS build without taking into consideration aesthetics and a build with some legendaries to make a set and give you a set bonus or looking good and still outputting a lot of damage. Without further ado, let's get it. First things first, the skills I use. Cold Snap. This skill freezes enemies in a large radius. The radius is actually quite larger than you think. This skill is mostly defensive and used in those panic moments. If you're surrounded by enemies and need to get out of jail free card. It could also be used defensively if you can catch a group of enemies before they split up. An example when a group of enemies just spawn. Blighted Rounds. This skill enhances your weapon's mag with decay infused bullets that inflicts toxic onto enemies and enemies within a small radius of the main target. It lasts until you reload. With the solo build, you will never have to worry about reloading as you will be getting all the kill shots. As for co-op, I will get into that when we get to the mods. This will be your main source of damage and the skill you need to have active 100% of the time. Blighted turret. A turret that inflicts toxic on the enemies. This is mainly used to distract enemies and with a certain class tree node, enhances your damage, which I will be explaining when we get to the class tree. With a certain mod, this turret can be turned into a freeze turret, which I prefer and find to be better. The Clara turret. A turret that deals some damage and freezes enemies from a short distance and long distance. Sometimes good for snipers if it chooses to target them. I swap this out with Cold Snap every now and then to change things up, and with the legendary set that I'll be showcasing, you can use two of them. Now moving on to the class tree. Here is my class tree. Of course, the pestilence tree, as this is weapon base. Two of the nodes I switch out depending on when I am playing solo or with a friend. These two nodes are Sower of Decay and Suction Module. For solo, Suction Module may help with a bit of sustainability and keep you alive in a situation which could have been death. Sower of Decay for the co-op aspect because of the current lag and bugs, etc etc. Or because your friend or people you matchmake with may take your killing shots, which affects your damage output using blighted rounds, which I will get into a bit later. Feel free to pause the video or screenshot to follow the same path. The build is focused on assault weapon damage. So we will be choosing nodes that enhance your assault weapon damage, specifically the assault rifle burst variant. Exposing Toxin is our first major node. Every time Toxic is afflicted on an enemy, Vulnerable is afflicted as well. This coupled with Mark for Execution, which makes Vulnerable 40% more effective. Vulnerable makes enemies take 15% more damage, and with Mark for Execution making it 40% more effective, that totals the extra damage to 21%. Cannonade. Activating Cold Snap will give you a 30% damage bonus for you and your allies for 10 seconds. Assault Master. As you will be using an Assault Rifle, a flat 20% increase to your damage. Two sides of the power. Do 20% more damage and take 15% more damage. This makes you pretty much a glass cannon, but as you will mainly be shooting from a distance, it shouldn't be an issue. UT14 Clips. Increase magazine size by 50%. Empowering Antenna. Activating Blighted Rounds or Blighted Turret increases your weapon damage by 40% for you and your allies. This is where your blighted turret comes into play. Every time you throw your blighted turret out, you get 40% damage for you and your team for 10 seconds. The blighted turret has a cooldown of 7 seconds. So if you're on a ball with throwing out your blighted turret, you get 40% damage at 100% uptime. Now for the weapons, armors and mods. The weapon is an assault rifle tactical variant. For some reason, tactical variants of assault rifles output so much more damage than any other variant. If you have the pre-order bonus items, the Earthborn Renegade Assault Rifle is already set up for you, pretty much. All you need to do is level it and upgrade it. Add the Killing Spree mod, if you have it, and you're set. If you don't have the pre-order bonus items, the main attributes you will be looking for are Crit Damage. Of course, this is the main source of high damage output. As you are a Technomancer, in most cases, you should be hanging back and dealing damage. So long range damage is a given. Sometimes, 
the enemies are just in your face. Close range damage is also a good attribute to have. Weapon life leech or status power instead of close range damage also works. Weapon life leech for a bit more sustainability, status power for more effective blighted turret and cold snap or cryo turrets. Bone shrapnel. If you are using a pre-order bonus weapon, bone shrapnel comes as a mod already. This mod does 200k damage after a killing shot in a small radius and applies bleed. Killing spree. Killing shots increase damage by 25% for this weapon for 20 seconds. It stacks up to 3 times giving you a damage bonus of 75%. There are always plenty of riflemen and peripherals to kill and they usually die in one hit. It will give you the 75% bonus to focus on elites or boss. Anomaly Enhancement If you don't have access to the Bone Shrapnel or Killing Spree, then Anomaly Enhancement can be a replacement for one of those mods. With the Grant Amplification node in the Class 3, this will help amplify your damage a bit more. You could either swap the Purge node or the Cannonade node out for Grant Amplification. As for your Secondary and Pistol, this will be anything you want. I choose the Railroad's Gaze and Torment and Agony for style points. The Railroad's Gaze is my number one in terms of looks, because of that purple swirl and glow on the weapon. Reminds me of when I played the MMO Perfect World with a plus 12 enhanced weapon. Now for the raw DPS part of this build using epics only. Your god rule attributes should be as follows. Bonus firepower, cross range damage and long range damage. This is if you mainly play solo. If you play co-op a lot, then I would say look for bonus firepower, long range damage, and cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction because in co-op, you may not always get the killing shot with your blighted rounds. And once you reload, you want your blighted rounds cooldown to be as short as possible. Damage mods you should be looking for are Captain Hunter. This increases your damage to at least by 25%. Kingslayer. Critical hits on an elite increases your firepower by X amount. This depends on the level of your gear for 6 seconds. Perseverance Munitions. Every time your health drops below 30%, you gain an increase to your firepower by X amount for 5 seconds. Crit Stack. Critical shots boost your anomaly power and firepower by X amount, which stacks up to 5 times. Bloodlust. Killing shots increase your firepower by X amount and stacks up to 3 times. Stand tall. Receive an anomaly power boost and firepower boost when out of cover for 5 seconds. This is more situational kind of mod to use. If fighting beasts, you will mainly be out of cover. But if fighting human based enemies, then you will be using cover a bit more. And the opposite to this mod is, hidden and dangerous. Increases firepower by X amount when shooting from cover. But instead of giving you anomaly power, it gives you a raw, Firepower boost. Radical therapy. Deal 15% more damage against enemies affected by toxic. Euthanizer. Deal 15% more damage against enemies inflicted by toxic. Sharp eye. Killing enemies for aiming down sights grants you X amount of firepower for 20 seconds. Stacks up to 3 times. And finally, dumb dumb bullets. Increases assault weapon damage by 10%. For defensive mods, Mitigation from death. Killing enemies while aiming down sights grants you X amount of armor for 10 seconds. Stacks up to 3 times. Damage absorber. Flight increase to your armor by X amount and resistance by 10%. Emergency stance. Gain a golem effect which protects you for 4 seconds when your health drops below 30%. Our setup currently looks like this. The helmet is god rolled with ice component. That makes the turret freeze enemies instead and euthanizer which makes you do 25% more damage to enemies inflicted by toxic. The chest piece isn't exactly god rolled but has two of the three with captain hunter and perseverance munitions. The legs is the same as the chest but with sharp eye and crit stack. The gloves with toxic lead and radical therapy. The boots with bloodlust an emergency stance. The emergency stance currently has a bug where once it is activated, the protective effect lasts until you close the game. There is no doubt they will fix this at some point or even soon. 
So it may be better to go with mitigation from death and start getting used to it before they nerf it. With this set, the highest damage with a crit is 1.8 million. Here is an image of the whole build. Feel free to pause or take a screenshot for reference. If you prefer to look decent and have a legendary set bonus, the Borealis Monarch set is good for solo and co-op play. The set provides a 10% bonus to your weapon damage on frozen enemies and also buffs your allies with 90% crit damage for 8 seconds after using Cold Snap. When I use this set, this is where sometimes I switch up Cold Snap and Cryo Turret. As you can see from the helmet, the tier 3 mod gives you 2 Cryo Turrets before cooldown and the chest makes the Cold Snap deal X amount of damage when killing an enemy in a 5 meter radius. With this set, you lose out on a bit of damage due to not having crit stack and perseverance munitions but if you use the cryo turret you gain a little more crowd control frozen targets makes getting crit shots easier and keeping them at a distance here is an image of the whole build feel free to pause or take a screenshot for reference and that ladies and gents is my current endgame builds here is a screenshot of the times I have currently accomplished on Challenge Day 15, Expeditions. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, please leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on, JUST DO IT! to support me and bring you more of these videos. Now I'll leave you ladies and gents with a gameplay of me doing a Paxton Homestead Expedition on Challenge Day 15 with a gold rating. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. I does this.
found a pod, but they got caught before they could open it. That is a shame. Whatever you can recover from that pod, we'll use it to honor those poor lost souls. I'll try to protect it. Access granted. 